Today, the Chinese successfully landed the Shengyi 4 probe on the far side of the moon, making this the very first time that China has set a major milestone in space exploration. The far side of the moon, while it has been seen through a number of spacecraft that have taken images on its far side and it's well mapped and fairly well understood from orbit, this is the very first time that a spacecraft has actually soft landed on the surface of the moon. So congratulations to the nation of China on making this world first. Now, why is the far side of the moon interesting? Well, there's a couple of things. First of all, let's talk about some of the engineering challenges. The far side of the moon never points towards Earth. We can't observe it from any kind of telescopes, including radio telescopes. So to be able to communicate with a spacecraft that's there, they have to have some kind of a relay satellite. It so happens that there is a region of space known as the Earth-Moon L2 point where a spacecraft can orbit around it. This point in space, the gravity between the Earth and the Moon is roughly equal. And as a result, spacecraft are able to maintain an equilibrium that allows them to continue to face both Earth and the far side of the Moon, which will allow for relay communication. The Chinese sent a spacecraft there number of months ago and have been testing it and making sure that it is working properly to send this mission to the far side of the moon. Everything's looking great and according to plans it's landed safely on the moon. Now this is not the first time that such a plan has been proposed. The Apollo astronauts were actually talking of having another Apollo mission that would land on the far side of the moon. This of course was cancelled but it would have used a similar architecture of having a relay satellite around the halo orbit at the Earth-Moon L2 point, which would allow the communication back to Earth. But it was never done as the budget of NASA decreased after the successful Apollo moon landings. This is also not the first time a spacecraft has landed on the far side of the moon. In fact, the very first US spacecraft that landed on the moon was a hard landing on the far side of the moon. This was not intentional. The spacecraft was intended to crash land on the near side of the moon so that we could be able to relay data back and forth, but the spacecraft failed on its way there. And as a result, it crash landed at a spot that was not intentional on the far side of the moon. In addition, a number of spacecraft at their end of their lives have crashed into the moon in a number of locations, some of which have included the far side of the moon. The reason why there's a near side and far side of the moon is kind of an interesting quirk because the moon is tidally locked towards the earth. It always will point a certain side towards the earth. And we know that the far side of the moon is quite a bit different than the near side. The near side in particular has a number of what are called seas, maris, the Sea of Tranquility where Apollo 11 landed is one such example. These are relatively flat, darker areas that are on the moon. The far side doesn't have any of these, it kind of looks like more typical of other airless bodies throughout the solar system. We'll find out what is in store, but I really look forward to seeing what they have and hopefully the Chinese Space Agency will publish the data so that we can all benefit from this and really learn more about our closest celestial companion, the Moon. We'll see what China ends up doing with all of this. Rumors have been going around for a number of years that they're planning a crewed mission to the surface of the moon. And this is another stepping stone towards doing that. We'll see what they end up doing. We do know that they're able to have a long duration mission. The Shengyi 3 probe, which the Shengyi 4 probe is based off of, has been operating for about five years, which is one of the longest running spacecraft on the surface of the moon ever. And this is a very challenging environment. The Lunar cycle has a 28-day time period so that you have 14 days of light and 14 days of dark, which makes a very extreme thermal environment. So it really is quite difficult. This is why the, the U-2 rover on the Shangi 3 mission failed. But the lander still continues to operate and produce data. We'll see what all of this comes from it. I really look forward to hearing more. Thank you much for joining me, and until next time, keep on tracking. Take care.